Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. and Wellness Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Alex. Today, we're going to talk about the little things. We have to start somewhere when we are beginning, and so today we're going to go into better choices. We're going to focus on making better choices and not perfect choices. I think a lot of the times when people give up on health goals or their wellness goals, it tends to be because they get a little overwhelmed. It's like, where do I start? Is this good enough? The Surgeon General says to work out 30 to 60 minutes per day. I don't know if I have that time. I don't know if I have that stamina or endurance starting out to begin with. And that's okay. The first step is taking any step. We just want to make better choices, not necessarily perfect ones. So today we're going to talk a little bit about how to have hard conversations, like how to reach someone who is experiencing grief, because that can be uncomfortable for a lot of people, and we just don't know where to start, and that can be detrimental to that relationship. So we're going to talk about taking those first little steps there. We're going to talk about home workouts, so just getting started at the very beginning, making better choices while eating on the go, making these better choices for your own emotional and spiritual wellness as well. So first step, I want to talk to you guys about the emotional wellness. So a lot of my friends have said that they don't know how to approach someone who is experiencing grief, whether that is someone facing a terminal illness or someone who has lost a loved one, or is just going through something really heavy. So I'm going to help you guys out with that today. Um, I've been to over 30 funerals before I even moved to Texas 10 years ago, and I've missed and attended numerous ones since then. So I'm very comfortable with grief and sadness, and I think that that's largely attributed to how many Don Bluth movies I watched growing up. So if you guys remember him, he was an animator for Disney for a while, and then they kind of had a falling out around the 80s, I think. And he departed and made some movies like Rockadoodle, and I think he was involved in The Land Before Time, and also All Dogs Go to Heaven. So those movies, I think, are very important in teaching children to be able to sit in their grief, to experience that fully, and to be comfortable with others grieving. Whereas in most Disney movies, you know, you just kind of start out and both of the parents are gone. The child is already an orphan and you don't really see them experiencing how that affects them with maybe the exception of Bambi, but it doesn't even then delve into it too much. So it's kind of understandable that a lot of people are really uncomfortable with having those conversations and in sitting in grief. Grief tends to be something we think of as needing to get over. We don't want to be sad. Let's, you know, get past this. But the only way around is kind of through it. So in order to have those conversations, I think it's really important to just let them grieve openly. Remember, it's better to be a better listener than a speaker. And just letting them experience that. Don't tell them it's going to be okay or you know, you'll get through this, it's going to be all right. That's not really what they need to hear in the moment for the most part. They just need to know it's okay to not be okay. 
and that it's okay not to be okay around you as one of their close friends or family members. You want to make sure that you don't give them pity. You don't want to show pity. You can show sympathy. Or if you've been through something similar, you can show empathy. But you don't want it to come across as pity. Because that's not what they want. They, People who are going through something heavy, like think to the last time you were going through something heavy. And really, you just wanted to be able to express it. If you're anything like me, you just wanted it to be normal for you to let it out. And I think a lot of times social facts make us feel like we can't do that. So, you know, kind of use the platinum rule. Treat other people better than the way that you would want to be treated. So consider how you'd want to feel yourself and then take that a step further. So help them feel that it's okay not to be okay. And they can they can just be not okay with you. Don't be embarrassed by anything that they share. And, you know, it goes without saying, don't make them feel embarrassed about it. There's no shame or pity or embarrassment in helping somebody grieve through their whatever baggage that they're carrying. You can also help them forget. So sometimes they really want to talk about it. Sometimes, just like you, they really don't. So keep that in mind and think about what they like to do for fun. If your friend is very into video games, play some video games. If your friend just wants to veg out on the couch and watch TV, go for it. My uncle Jimmy was in hospice for quite a while before he passed, and he was still making jokes right up until the end. He did not want to have any of those serious conversations, and he felt that we all knew everything that we needed to know. So for his emotional wellness in this grieving process, he just made jokes and had a good time and, you know, smiled a lot and saw our smiles. And that was what was important to him. So that is what we pursued. You can also bring food. Nothing says I love you like food. Am I right, ladies? So if your friend is grieving for for any reason, um, remember everybody's grief and their emotions are particular to them. So someone else's worst experience might be different from yours. It's almost guaranteed to be. So whenever they are experiencing whatever form of grief, that they're in, you can bring them food. Food is something that most people actually neurochemically are drawn to more when they are upset. When you're stressed in any way, then they did this study a while back and folks didn't necessarily eat more, but no matter what and no matter what type of diet that they normally had, they would eat more junk food when they were stressed out. That's your body just craving more calories to try to give you the energy to get through whatever's stressing you because your cells can't tell the difference between, you know, a physical stressor, something that's endangering your life and something that's just really emotionally crushing you in the moment. So that's why you're going to crave those fattier foods. So take your friend their favorite box of cookies. Take them a pizza. I know I will never say no to pizza, no matter what type of mood I'm in. So you, that's a good place to start. You can also just reach out to them and let them know that you're thinking of them. A lot of times when people are grieving, they might not feel emotionally well enough or like they have enough energy to really reach out to their friends or even to respond sometimes. So I like to just send my friends messages every so often and be like, hey, I'm thinking about you. You don't have to reply. I know you're really busy and you have a lot going on right now. But I just thought of you today and I wanted you to know that I love you. I think that that's something that we would have done a lot as children. You tell your friends you love them all the time when you're kids. And it, it, we just grow out of it a little bit as we get older. It gets socialized out of us, really. So just reaching out and letting people know you're thinking of them without any pressure to reply can be really helpful to people who are in the grieving process. You also just want to be really flexible with them. Let them cancel on you. It's all about kindness. They're going through something and sometimes things are very heavy and you want to go somewhere and you make the plans and then the time comes and you're not quite ready to go through with the plans. That is familiar to anyone who is grieved and probably also to many introverts like myself. So just be chill about it. They're not trying to be flaky generally. 
they're just overwhelmed. And we all get overwhelmed sometimes and could use that extra understanding. So really what it comes down to is when someone's experiencing grief, just be there for them. Let them know it's okay to not be okay. And that's the best thing you can do to help your friends foster their emotional wellness in a hard time. We are going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about how you can start on your health and wellness in home workouts. We'll be right back. Are you looking to learn more about the latest trends from the fitness world? Are you confused by all of the different trends that are out there? The GSMC Fitness Podcast is the place for you. The GSMC Fitness Podcast is the place to come for people of all skill and interest levels. Join us as we explore the latest trends in the fitness world. Does that new exercise really work? Should I try yoga? Whatever your question, chances are good you'll find an answer on the GSMC Fitness Podcast. Welcome back. So our last segment was a little bit heavy, but I feel like hopefully everyone has gathered some more information for their emotional wellness toolkit and how to help their friends when they're grieving. This next one is going to be on home workouts, specifically for hermits like me. So I hermit pretty hard like Obi-Wan Kenobi, and I don't like to leave my house a whole lot unless there's something really cool going on, like a cool music show or something that I can't pick up here because I can't get live music in my home unless I make it myself. So for being a homebody and wanting to start working out, or if you're just wanting to start working out in general and you aren't quite ready to be comfortable doing that out in public or in the gym, then a good place to start is just finding a home workout that works for you. There are so many different kinds. I have tried a slew of these, starting with when I was a kid at my parents' house, and my mom had all of these um, Richard Simmons workouts, which I still love. Those are just so high energy and fun, especially sweating to the oldies. That's one of my personal favorites. And she had some other ones with like Jane Fonda and stuff, you know, where everyone's wearing the unitards and those were a lot of fun. And Denise Austin, that was the big one. Denise Austin. I remember doing that one a lot because she did that pony move where she throws one arm up in the air and she says pony every time she does it. But those are, those can be a lot of fun. They seem a little bit silly sometimes because we are in different fashion at this point, but everything rolls back around and it will probably be totally commonplace again. But I started with those, and then we also, my parents bought the gazelle at one point. The um, It's kind of like an elliptical, but it's freestanding, and you can use it in your living room. So we would use that while we were watching TV and stuff. We'd watch the X-Files and, you know, go for a chalk on the elliptical. It was a lot of fun, actually. I really liked pulling both at the same time um, to work out my pectoral muscles. That actually seemed to really work very well with just using my body weight. But we tried those, and those were a lot of fun. And also, in graduate school, and later on, I started using these dance videos that I found on YouTube. So you can find just about anything on the internet right now. I mean, you found this podcast here. You can find all kinds of fitness stuff to supplement that as well. So... I like using the workout videos by like the fitness marshal. He has some really great ones. I believe his name is Caleb and they are pop songs that he has made fitness choreography for. And usually he has at least two people with him and everyone is doing somewhat of a different modification for it. So depending on where you are in your fitness journey, you can really use these type of videos to grow with you. So you can just really zone in on one of the people in the group and watch what they're doing. And then when you feel like you're ready to go up to the next level of difficulty, just look at one of the other people who are dancing there. 
They're all there to help make it easier for different experience levels. Another one that is very similar to that is P90X. So those home workout videos like that, those are super awesome and they're really easy. The only thing that I've needed for that one are resistance bands if you want to use bands. If you want to use weights instead of bands, just order you some weights. You can get them off of Amazon Prime if you have Prime um, in two days, free shipping, even though they're super heavy. Your mailman is going to be a little miffed at you for a little bit. You might want to leave him some cookies um, or something at Christmas, but um, you can also pick them up at Walmart. All kinds of different stores carry them, any fitness store as well. So check those out. And I think the only other thing that they use is... Oh, the big one is one of those over-the-door hanging um, pull-up machines. That's what they are, pull-up machines. Um, so you hang those over your door frame, and then you can do your pull-ups on it, If you're, as long as your door frame is stable enough to hold your weight. I am always a little bit afraid of that since I tend to live in apartments. So I am not the homeowner, and I don't really want to break something like, you know, all the molding off of my doorway. And have my apartment complex uh, find me for that. So I tend to use the resistance bands to get around that. So you don't even have to purchase that over the door pull up bar in order to get those same workouts. So they do modifications for it in there too. And it's usually the main guy and then three other people and everyone will do it a little bit differently. They'll also discuss how many reps that they're doing per each set and everything. It's really awesome. They remind you to take water breaks. So I like that one too. That's one of my personal favorites. You can also go on YouTube and get stretching and yoga videos. So we talk a lot about working out in fitness. And I talk a lot about hydrating because it's very important. But also we really need to work on our stretching. So never stretch cold muscles. That's the one thing to know. People disagree as to whether you should be stretching before your workout or after or both. But the important thing is that those muscles are warm first. So do a warm up at the very least prior to stretching. That way you're less likely to pull something and hurt yourself. But you can go to YouTube and just Google stretching videos and and yoga videos, and there are so many different types for beginners, for modified forms. Like if you just type in like the type of issues that you have, then it it can really help you out. So I have a bum knee um, and I kind of have some trouble doing certain yoga poses because of it. They have totally modified ones. So you can just be like yoga poses for bum knees and boom, it's going to pull it up for you so you can have someone to follow along with. I highly recommend those. If you get a yoga block, that's also really helpful. You can usually get them for like five bucks, maybe eight bucks. And um, those are really awesome. They help you not have to bend down as far so that your form is still good. So your muscles are still going to be in the correct shapes when you're improving them. But you're not having to work as hard or you're not having to to force it too far in a way that might result in an injury. So I shied away from yoga blocks for a long time. I'm like, no, it's fine. I can do it. I can do it. But I finally went and got one after my chiropractor recommended it for stretching out my back. And I use it for all kinds of yoga stuff now. So don't be afraid of the yoga block. I know it's tempting to be like, oh, no, I can just go ahead and push through it. But when it comes to our bodies, there are certain times you really need to listen to your body and not push through too far. We're not trying to prove anything to our body. Our body knows its limitations. So we're going to listen to it, too. Okay, so as far as weights go, if you don't want to order weights, you really can use soup cans. I know a lot of people have said that and... Uh, People probably think that's a joke, but you can use them. Remember, we're making better choices, not perfect choices. If you haven't been working out in a long time or you're working your way back up or if you're just starting your fitness journey now, you can use those soup cans. You have to start somewhere. So go ahead and fill up those soup cans 
Or if you have a water bottle that has one of those really nice screw-on lids that you know is not going to spill all over you, you can fill those up with water. Fill two of them up, use one in each hand, and work out that way. You're just trying to make sure that the weight is evenly distributed. That's all. That's why dumbbells are shaped the way that they are. But you've also seen people use kettlebells. So kettlebells are the ones that are the the weight on the bottom, kind of like a bowling ball, and then they have that one handle on the top. So you can do a whole bunch of different exercises depending on which equipment you decide to have. But if you don't have any, start with the soup cans. If you're looking to buy cardio equipment, you can also buy a floor bike or an under-the-desk bike. So it's one where it doesn't have a seat on it. It's just the pedals and such. And they have electric ones online, too. Or rather, mine's battery-powered. But you can get them online, and you just pop them under the desk and pedal them. Mine has a tension gauge. It'll tell me roughly how far I've gone. It counts, like, the RPMs and stuff as well. So it just depends on which type you get. You can also get a totally analog one where it is just the pedals. So I recommend those. Those can be fun. I really like them. And then while I'm at my desk, I can actually be pedaling too. In addition to those under-the-desk bikes, you can also just use a good old-fashioned jump rope and jumping jacks for your cardio You can also do those classic core workouts from just doing crunches. And if you're not used to doing it yet and crossing your ankles isn't enough to get you a boost to use that core to really engage and do those crunches, just pop your feet under the edge of the couch. It's super easy. And then as you start building those core muscles, you can stop using the couch and go from there with just your legs spread. Or you can even start doing the wide leg sit-ups. It all depends on how far you're wanting to go in your fitness journey and your specific fitness goals. But those are just some examples of some better choices that we can make with our home workouts. And remember, if you're not working out at all yet, or you haven't in a long time, even just starting with 10 minutes is good. We want to work up to what the Surgeon General recommends, but when you're not doing much already, then any step is a great step. So five minutes, 10 minutes, work your way up. Make yourself little short-term goals. You can have both short-term and long-term goals. We're going to go on another break, and when we come back, we are going to talk about eating on the go. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. segment we were talking about home workouts for home bodies and how you can find different videos for cardio and stretching and yoga etc online and other types of equipment that you could use next we're going to talk about eating on the go so how do we make better choices in our busy modern world we live in that's hard (laughs) Like a lot of things that are worth pursuing, it is difficult. But I do recommend meal prepping. Now, I know that doesn't sound great to a lot of you. It is, or it can be, a lot of work. And it can also feel kind of boring, like you're eating the same thing over and over again. 
So we're going to talk about how to give it a little bit of variety while still maximizing your time efficiency. We're also going to talk about why we would do that. So why meal prep? Well, one, obviously there's the health part, but two, it can end up being more efficient. So I know that it, at the point when you are going and cooking all this stuff, it can feel like it's taking forever because you have, you know, seven mason jars out and all of these Tupperware containers and everything else and you're just cooking this huge body of food. So it can be up to an hour, an hour and a half worth of work depending on what you're making. However, in the long term, it does seem to be more efficient. So it's only about an hour and an hour and a half at that one day of the week in order to prepare all of this. But if you think about how much work you would have to do each day in order to make the separate meals individually or how long it would take you to go out and retrieve food from a fast food place during lunch or to sit down for a full lunch during your work day, then it really is more efficient. Now, efficiency isn't everything. What about flavor? So I'm right there with you. I do not like diets that require you to lose flavor. So the key here is going to be spices and variety, the spice of life. I couldn't help myself. I'm sorry. So spices like coriander, that's one of my favorites, especially for pork. It's going to give it kind of a citrusy flavor. So I like to make pork chops. I'll make a, you know, a couple of them for like a day or two and put coriander in it and some thyme and some browned butter. So you put the butter in the pan, wait for it to get good and browned. It's going to give you more of like a nutty flavor. It's so more of a well-rounded butter flavor. You should do the same thing if you're going to make a grilled cheese. Pro tip. But then go ahead and throw in the coriander, throw in the thyme, and you know maybe some cracked pepper, and then place in your pork chops. It's super easy, and it, they taste so good, especially if you have like a nice homemade chutney that doesn't have added sugar in it to go ahead and put with it. It can be really delicious. So I recommend doing it that way. Pork chops also cook super quickly. It's like seven minutes. And the other one that I like to do in my house is I like to make a ham. Yes, I do mean like a Christmas ham. So my mom had this recipe for a Christmas ham and, you know, it involves cloves and everything. It's supposed to also have brown sugar and I do tend to put that on there. It balances out considering how much ham is actually there. And the brown sugar is more of an outer crust. It's like a glaze more than anything. But you go ahead and you put that in the oven. And when it comes out, I'll go ahead and cut off a few slices of it for like ham sandwiches and, you know, breakfast, stuff like that. Or just to eat with some green beans and a sweet potato and stuff. But then I'll also go ahead and cube the rest of it and put them in freezer bags. So the way that works is that later on, if I decide to make like a Swedish pie, it's like a quiche with a top on top of it, um, then, you know, that has eggs and ham and spinach and broccoli in it. So it's actually rather healthy, especially if you don't put a ton of ham in it. And I like to eat that with some hot sauce, usually Cholula or Sriracha. So that is one of the things that I would just pull out of the freezer, go ahead and defrost it or let it defrost overnight in the fridge, preferably, and then go ahead and just toss it in there. We also, in this house, tend to make feijoada, which is a Brazilian black bean dish, and it has the version that we make is like Southern Brazilian fusion food. So we put this ham in there um, and some sausage and stuff and go ahead and put some bay leaves and some onions and some fresh garlic in there. And it really reduces down and is delicious over some like brown rice and stuff. Now, I don't really like brown rice that much. I know that I'm supposed to. I do like quinoa, so I'll put it over quinoa. Um, I'll put it over bulgur, stuff like that. Um, but I'm not so such a fan of the brown rice. 
I don't know why. Maybe I'm cooking it wrong. If you guys have any tips about how to make brown rice delicious, please do drop them in the comments. I would love that. But go ahead and make a ham or something like that. Or make a bunch of chicken. If you like a roast chicken, just roast the whole chicken. And then take it apart, shred it, or put it in whatever form that you would like to eat it in later. Stick it in the freezer. In addition to the quiche and to the slices and for like sandwiches and biscuits, we'll also cube it for any other kind of beans. If we're going to make pintos, we'll also save the bone and make pinto beans with that in the crock pot. So you can really do a lot with that ham. So not only is it going to get you a lot of variety so that you're not just eating ham each day, it's something where ham is the base of it, but you could potentially have a different meal each day. So just put the black beans and the rice with it versus, you know, a sweet potato and some broccoli. There are a ton of different things that you could do. Put it on, you know, a whole grain English muffin in the morning. Whatever it is that you enjoy eating, you can find a way to work that in there and to make it a little bit healthier. So at the end of the day, ham is not the healthiest meat, but it is healthier as an option than, say, going and getting something more processed from a fast food joint for lunch. And it doesn't have to be ham. Like I said, you can do chicken and other stuff. Ham is just one of my favorites, but I tend to put more eggs and vegetables into that quiche than the ham too. So it's also about moderation and how much you're of it you're using. A lot of the point of the ham is to provide flavor rather than being the focus point itself, if that makes sense. So it's just giving some flavor from the cloves and from the brown sugar into the rest of that quiche and really bringing it home. Because like I said, those spices are really important. So explore different spices. Explore using coriander and cardamom. Cardamom is another one that I put in with those pork chops. It's so good. It really brings out the flavor of pork. So I know that there are so many spices that a lot of us haven't tried. Just start bringing some random ones home or Googling recipes with them in it. We have saffron and everything in our pantry now and we don't use it a ton but every now and then if we're like you know I want this specific type of food well bam we already have all of the the spices for it and it's going to make a big difference in the type of chicken even that you eat I especially do not like meal prep that involves a lot of chicken even though I know that's supposed to be one of the meats that if you are going to eat meat you should be eating more of but I get really bored with baked chicken really easily. My ex will just go ahead and put salt and pepper on it, and that is good enough for him. But I cannot stand it. So to get by that, I don't put sugar or any sugary marinades or anything on it. But I will go ahead and put a ton of smoked paprika and some, oh, what is it? It's red pepper some type of red pepper. I think it's chili pepper and even some umami on it. I like the little umami powder that um, you can get from Trader Joe's and such. It's really delicious and, you know, just be careful. It is made from mushrooms and stuff. So if you have any mushroom type allergies, you might want to avoid that one, but it can be really delicious as well. And then you're not putting you know, a ton of things that are too salty on there. I mean, be careful with the umami. But, you know, these aren't spices that are full of sugar and stuff. So you can still have flavor without adding a lot of calories or, you know, other components of your diet that could, you know, cause water retention and other problems like having too much salt. Now, if you forget your lunch, that's okay. Sometimes that happens, or sometimes we're just in a hurry. But if you are going to go and get your lunch out, I recommend Googling the nutrition facts first. A filet of fish might be one of the healthier things at McDonald's, but it is definitely not a healthy choice. Just because it is fish instead, that doesn't make it a healthier choice. So we want to make the best decisions possible. So go ahead and Google something like, fast food places with low calories and check those out. See what they have to say. 
You might end up at just a regular sandwich shop. You never know. Maybe you'll find your new favorite vegan place. That is how one of my friends found her new favorite vegan place. So just check it out, and maybe you'll find something new and cool you didn't even know was in the neighborhood. All right, we're going to go on a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about our own spiritual wellness and how to take the little steps to nurture it. The GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere where you find podcasts just type gsmc in the search bar the GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast. In our last segment, we were talking about taking those little steps for eating on the go. So how to make your meal prep really efficient, but without losing any of your flavor by using different types of meat and using that same meat that you're cooking in different ways and really, you know, taking spices up on what they do best, which is flavoring our food. Remember, it doesn't have to be salty or sugary to be flavorful. So next, we're going to talk a little bit about nurturing our own emotional wellness. So in, in our first segment, we talked about how to reach out to somebody experiencing grief and to nurture others' emotional wellness. And that can also be a really good and important part of our own emotional wellness. Nurturing other people can help us as well. So when you are in your own problems and you are just focusing on yourself, then you're really ruminating on them. And it's not necessarily going to make it better. It's just going to make you fixated. But helping others can also help you. Sometimes, though, we do need to set boundaries. So in your own emotional wellness, boundaries are very important. So those can have anything to do with how frequently you're able to help someone or to what degree you're able to help them and the timing for helping them. So, you know, if if somebody asks you for something and you're just like, oh no, I just, I don't feel like I have the energy for this right now. Just consider it. Is this truly an emergency? Are you the only person who can handle said emergency? Is there someone who is better suited for it that you could reach out to for assistance with this that would not compromise your friend's confidants? So what I really want you to just think about is, you know, there's a happy medium. There can be a happy medium between your own emotional wellness and being there for another to assist them. So setting boundaries can be very important in that aspect. Now, that's another hard conversation to have, just like it is with someone experiencing grief, depending on how your friends tend to take things. So if your particular friend has trouble with accepting the boundaries, you know, just be very frank but polite about it and be like, hey, I love you and I do want to be there for you right now, but I have this thing going on and I can't. Do you think that this person could maybe help you right now? So you're still trying to help them find a solution, but without compromising the boundaries that you need at that moment. There is this theory that formed on Tumblr, I believe, at least that's where I saw it popularized, and it's called Spoon Theory, and it just says that for you to imagine that if you started your day and you had a finite number of spoons to exchange for doing tasks... So say getting out of bed in the morning is two spoons and taking a shower is one spoon 
and breakfast is one spoon and going to work is three spoons and making it through the whole day is four spoons and getting home and then cooking dinner is another two spoons. Well, if you only have 10 spoons, then by the time that you get home, you are not going to be able to have the energy to engage with other people maybe, or maybe not even to cook dinner, depending on if you also took a shower that morning and used spoons for that and for eating breakfast. So if you all have a finite number of spoons, then we're all going to have difficult days sometimes where we've used our spoons, no matter how many we have, completely. We've we've exhausted our spoons in whatever tasks we wanted to do that day. That happens to everybody. And just being compassionate with your friends about it and being compassionate with yourself is really important there. Some days are just going to be harder than others, and that's totally okay. But when you don't have the spoons, it's really good to just be honest with your friends about it. Lies only compound a problem. And I know that a lot of people get anxious and they're like, oh no, they're going to be mad at me if I tell them that I didn't want to go or that, you know, I just couldn't get out of bed or, you know, I'm I'm embarrassed to say that I'm just too depressed to leave my house right now or I'm too anxious and I can't even find a pair of pants and I don't know what to wear. I mean, a lot of us have been there. So just go ahead and be a little vulnerable about it. Admit their reason. Just say, hey, I don't have the spoons for it today. And if they say, what are spoons? What are you talking about? I didn't ask you for a spoon. I don't need any spoons. Just explain to them spoon theory and go from there. I had to do that with a friend a couple of weeks ago. But now that they understand spoon theory, they're like, oh, okay, yeah, you don't have spoons right now. And I'm like, you're right. I don't have forks. I don't have knives. I don't have sporks. I don't have any silverware or cutlery right now. I cannot do that thing. I just, I don't have the emotional bandwidth for it. That's the other term I use. And they're super understanding at that point. They're like, oh, okay. I just thought you were mad at me because you haven't talked to me in a few days. It's like, no, I'm not avoiding you. I'm just, I have no spoons. So just being open and honest about it can help a lot. Candor is really important and more than just a faction in the Divergent Young Adult series. So the next thing I want you guys to keep in mind is to apologize when you're wrong. That one can be a big one that a lot of folks struggle with. So you have to think about with for your emotional wellness, is being right what's most important right here? Is this going to damage that friendship or that relationship in some way if you just insist on still arguing it out, even if you know that you're wrong or if you got something wrong, you know, just going, mea culpa, that, that was that was my bad, I'm sorry, you were correct. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with being wrong. Everyone is wrong at some point. And just being able to admit it can be very freeing because you're not going to worry about carrying the burden of you know, that lie or that lie by omission. You're not going to worry about still being angry or them still being angry and that being a part of your friendship history. You just go ahead and stop that beast in its tracks from becoming a bigger monster by just going, you know, you're right. I'm, I was wrong. I apologize. I'm very sorry about that and mean it. It's important to mean it. So just taking those little steps of just saying, you're right. I was wrong about that. Even if you don't get to the apology part at first, it, if that's a big step for you, then your friends will generally also recognize that. And they will be like, oh, okay. Well, thank you. In that same vein, forgive. So this is the one I struggle with the most. And it is very important for emotional wellness. So forgiving people can be really hard because it feels sometimes like you're giving them a pass. But that's not necessarily what's happening. Forgiveness doesn't mean that it undoes anything that they did or that you still have to have a relationship with that person or that you have to think about them or be involved in their lives in any way. All forgiveness means is that you are letting it go. You are choosing to keep and carry with you only the things that serve you, only the things that feel good for you. Now, I'm not saying run away from everything that feels bad. Don't get me wrong. Growth comes from discomfort. But there are some situations where people 
have done bad things to us, and it's really hard to really let them go. So you don't have to forget about it. You don't have to get back involved with that person. But just going, okay, I'm not carrying that with me into my future. That is something that happened in the past, and I'm going to let it go. That's the only thing that we can do. Remember, when we can't change our circumstances, the only things that we can change is ourselves. So also take some time away for you. It's okay to need you time. I'm particularly talking to you single parents out there. It's difficult. Actually, all parents, it's difficult. You have little people around you 24-7 and you're going to work and you have to do those things and then you come back and there's little people. And it's okay to go ahead and take time for you. I was watching the new season of Grace and Frankie this week and there was an episode in which... This isn't really a spoiler. It was like a a one-minute story. They just said that uh, one of the characters had spent Mother's Day by herself at one point. And this girl was very taken aback. And she's like, what? You spent Mother's Day without your family? And she was like, it's called Mother's Day. That day was for me. So I took it for me. And I was like, you know what? She's right. That is for her. You are always surrounded by your children as a parent. That's okay. Take Mother's Day or Father's Day off. Take that day for yourself, and it doesn't have to be Mother's Day or Father's Day or any type of special named day, but just taking, you know, an hour or two to yourself. Let your partner watch the kids. Let your best friend watch the kids. Go ahead and go and grab you an iced coffee or something. Do something that feels nice for you, and it can just be a little thing. Just a coffee, just going and getting a pretzel or something, something that you enjoy that's small but just for you. Doing small things, especially acts of kindness for ourselves, is very important for our emotional wellness. And it doesn't have to be huge, just little things. All right, we're going to go ahead and take another break. And when we come back, we are going to talk about taking those small spiritual steps. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back. In our last segment, we were talking about emotional wellness and how to nurture it in yourself with the tiny steps. So little things like setting boundaries, spoon theory, just being open and candid with your friends about what's going on when you're just having too much. So right now, we're going to talk about spiritually nurturing yourself and taking those little steps. So little steps here are really just acts of kindness. That's all a lot of life is, in my opinion, is just small acts of kindness. So to nurture yourself spiritually, be kind to yourself and to others. I think that we tend to judge ourselves a lot by our intentions, and we judge others by, you know, what what actually ends up happening, what we end up seeing, our perceptions, So with our intentions, that's why people a lot of times say, oh, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. And it's like, well, you didn't mean to, but you still did. It's like, I get that the intent was not there, but here we are. So that's the big difference because we're just like, well, you did this to me. And it's like, well, I didn't mean to. That's because we're talking on two different levels. We're talking intent and we're talking perception. 
So you guys are still talking to each other, but you're kind of talking over each other or at each other. It's it's perpendicular, kind of. You're going to hit at some point and have something in common there, but it might take a while to get there on that path. So, you know, just keep that in mind that, you know, we tend to judge ourselves differently from how we judge other people and try to see the other people's perspective when you're having a conflict. That can make it a lot easier and go, oh, okay, well, he's probably looking at it this way. I would be looking at it this way because if it were me, that would not have been my intent. And I get what he's saying when he says that. Now I need to just clearly explain that, you know, from my perspective, this is what happened. And that is a path forward for healing, essentially. So when you guys can talk on the same level, then you're able to actually find a resolution. And then you're not carrying that in your spirit and in your emotions. It's not heavy to take that around with you after that. It's also important for spiritual growth. That should be something that we're all seeking out if you consider yourself a spiritual person. And I recognize that not everyone does, and that's totally okay. If you are a spiritual person, though, then seek out that growth. We don't want to just wait for growth to come to us. It's important to go and look for it ourselves. And there's a couple ways that you can do that. So... The first step there is going to be acknowledging the ugly. It's just like the first step is admitting that you have a problem. You have to recognize the facts and the truth as what's in front of you. So if you are acknowledging the ugly in you, then what I mean by that is just, you know, recognizing when you do things that you don't like, where it's like, man, I was really mean to my sister the other day. I wasn't even really mad at her. I was just mad about school or whatever and I took it out on her just because she borrowed my favorite shirt or or you know whatever is happening in your life at the time it could be any little thing like that where it's just like okay that's a little thing yeah and that's the point is that the little things are going to be the easiest things to start changing so you can just go back and talk to your sister and apologize to her and go hey I was really upset that you were wearing my shirt but I kind of popped off on you way harder than was necessary. So I'm sorry about that. I sh- I shouldn't have reacted as strongly as I did. I apologize. Now, it doesn't matter at that point if she is right about it or if she's still mad about it. It's just going, okay, I'm going to let this go. I'm going to, to own up to it. I'm going to recognize the ugly part. I'm going to own up to it, and I'm going to apologize. So I'm not carrying that anymore. I am doing the right thing, and whenever she's not so mad anymore, then maybe we can talk about this again. That's going to help you in moving forward. So that's what seeking that growth and acknowledging the ugly and also forgiving, it's really good for you spiritually, not just emotionally. It's going to help you move forward. So the only thing that we can do in a lot of cases is keep moving forward. It's going to help a lot if you're able to see the ugly and then work on it and then let it go. That's part of what mindfulness is all about. So if that really appeals to you, I recommend checking out one of our earlier podcasts on mindful meditation and maybe looking at some YouTube videos for guided mindful meditations. You can also do the meditations where you just focus on your breathing and start there with like the little ones. And don't worry, it's very hard to meditate for a long time. My ex meditates for an hour in the morning and an hour at night, and he's been working on that for years. So that is now part of his daily practice. But he's one of the most routine-oriented and driven people that I know. He he has He's motivated and he's driven all the time. So he can get up at 6 a.m., you know, an hour or two before work and still do that and everything and just made it part of his morning routine. But I remember when he first started it about nine years ago and we were in college, he'd been meditating a little bit before that, but mostly just in group settings. And he decided to do it for his behavioral psychology class. And he started trying to modify his behavior because that was one of their assignments And he started with just, you know, like five minutes a day. And then after a few days, he cranked that up to 10 minutes. And then after a couple weeks, he cranked that up to 
20 and then he finally got to 45 minutes and then at a certain point over the years an hour a day and now he's at the point where he does it two hours a day once in the morning and once at night and that really helps him center who he is as a person for the entire day now i have not gotten into mindful meditation i've tried it a few times and it just hasn't felt like it's for me and that's okay there is not a one size fits all for spirituality just like there's not one for you know your emotional wellness you have to find what works best for you so if you're interested in that go ahead and check that out online for me i like to do yoga while i play some energetic music i know that yoga is supposed to be calming and everything but i get distracted very easily so i need to be watching tv or listening to music or something while i do it because again that's what works best for me if i'm doing it without that then i'm probably not going to get it done but if i do listen to the music while or watch tv while i'm doing my yoga i'm more likely to do it and i'm also getting exercise while i'm watching tv so i'm not being sedentary at that point so again the little things not perfect just better you can just start meditating five minutes a day doing yoga five minutes a day, just stretching really five minutes a day. We all start somewhere. Not that long ago, I was not that flexible, but then I started stretching every night using one of those YouTube videos for, I think they're, one of them's 14 minutes and the one's about 20 minutes or so. And they were just stretches for beginners and yoga for beginners to increase flexibility. And I started doing those and now I'm rather flexible. It's um, It's been a while since I started that, probably about six months ago, but it's very noticeable now. Um, or it's very obvious, not noticeable, but it's obvious when I move around and stuff. You know, my joints don't ache as much and other people can also tell. And it does calm me down. It does calm my spirit even if I am doing it while I'm watching TV. I find watching sci-fi to generally be very calming, especially if I'm watching a show that I've seen hundreds of times before, like the X-Files, then it's comforting. I already know it. There's no surprises in there, even if people are yelling on the screen. So it's just very relaxing for me. It's something I can do as like an evening routine. So pursue what makes you feel good spiritually. Define it for you. It's okay if it's something that other people think is silly. Not everyone is going to believe in the things that you believe. No one, not everyone's going to believe what I believe. So if you are, you know, into astrology and tarot and all that jazz, you do what feels best to you. And if you're not into that, that's okay. You do what feels best to you in that aspect. It can literally be anything that you want it to be. Whatever is bringing you that spiritual comfort, whether that is being out in nature or Um, Some of my friends like to do this thing where they align their chakras and I don't understand it, but whenever I go to the beach or if I go somewhere that has fresh flowing water, a lot of times they'll ask me to bring back, you know, ocean water or that fresh flowing water so that they can cleanse their uh, chakra rocks. Now, I'm not entirely sure what any of that means or what it does, and that's okay. My ignorance of the subject doesn't mean that I can't help them in their spiritual and emotional wellness journey by bringing something back for them. I just respect that everybody comes to things in their own way, and that makes it a lot easier for me and for everyone around me. So remember that platinum rule of treating others better than you would want to be treated. All right, guys, we're going to go on another quick break, and when we come back, we are going to talk about the little things, and doing stuff for the first time. TSMC Beauty Tips Podcast gives you advice on everything from hair to fashion to skincare products. We'll talk about the latest trends in makeup, hairstyles, and anti-aging remedies. And we'll cover all of the newest fashion trends. If you have an interest in or questions about the beauty trends that might work best for you, the Golden State Media Concepts Beauty Tips Podcast has got you covered. Download the GSMC Beauty Tips Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Well, 
Welcome back to the GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast. In our last segment, we were talking about spiritual wellness. So nurturing it in yourself and others by following that platinum rule of being better to people than you would even want them to be to you and just nurturing kindness and pursuing what makes you feel good spiritually and defining that for you. This last segment, we are going to talk about how it's difficult to start a new thing. The other night, I was learning some new stuff on the computer, and I went in my group chat, and I'm like, ugh, I hate doing things for the first time. And everyone's like, I know, right? First times are really terrible. And I'm like, yeah, it took me three hours to nail this new skill that I'm learning, and I had to learn all about it and then try to implement it in a new program that I was not familiar with. And it took me three hours the first time. The second time I had to do it, it took me 12 minutes. And I'm like, yes, this is better. This is my comfort zone where I'm, I'm, I like to be good at things. And I think that most people prefer to be good at things. But there's also a quote from Adventure Time that I heard once. And yes, that is mostly a kid's cartoon, but it is awesome and has a lot of cool lessons in it. And one of the main protagonists, Jake the dog, is talking to another character. And the other character is like, oh, no, I'm so bad at this. I suck at this. And Jake goes, dude, sucking at something is the first step towards being sort of good at something. And that has really stuck with me. I, I even put it in my bullet journal next to a picture I drew of that dog. So give yourself permission to suck at stuff. We are all beginners at a certain point in different things. At one point, I was a baby who couldn't talk. Now I'm clearly speaking. So... I might stumble a little bit every now and then, but remember, not perfect, just better. We're all just working to get better on these things. And it's okay to start somewhere where you're not great at it. That's actually preferable because it means it's really, you're really challenging yourself. And that's preferable to me. I understand that that's not preferable for everyone, but that's part of my spiritually seeking growth is I live for uncomfortably starting new things and sucking at things because doing things for the first time is very exciting. It can also be very frustrating, particularly if you're doing something like programming or, you know, it can be overwhelming if you go to the gym for the first time and you're like, what are all these machines? What is going on? And for that, I would recommend Cynthia's podcasts and also the fitness podcasts. So those can be really helpful in learning how to do new things. So if you do some research on it, then it's not so bad learning it the first time. And remember, there's lots of different ways to do research for different learning styles. So you can consult forums online. You can ask your friends if they have any experience in it. So you can get some one-on-one -on -one type learning. You can also read all about it. You can find out a bunch about it on YouTube. So the other night when I was trying to learn that new computer program, I went on YouTube and I found one that was really great. Um, this video, the, the guy showed me almost exactly what I needed to do. And the only things that he didn't show me, I figured out by just kind of clicking around in the program in a blank file that I knew I was not going to break anything in. So I tried that out quite a bit and it worked out. I figured out what I needed to do. Now, I still don't know what a ton of those buttons do in that program. There are so many buttons and sub buttons and sub sub buttons, but it's okay because I've already gotten that down from that three hours to those 12 minutes and I'm going to learn more as I go along and I'm going to mess things up. I'm going to suck at it and that's okay. It's like Miss Frizzle said on the Magic School Bus. Um, I'm telling you guys how old I am. Although there is a new one, I think, with Kate McKinnon. But Miss Frizzle always said, take chances, make mistakes. And that also really stuck with me. I love that. You have to give yourself the opportunity to take chances and to make these mistakes. And it's one of those little things in your wellness journey. So whether that's your emotional wellness and your spiritual wellness, where you're learning to be vulnerable and candid with your friends and learning to apologize or to forgive, 
taking those little steps in, you know, starting to work out for five or 10 minutes at the time or eating on the go and meal prepping and you forget to do it for three days in the week. That's okay. You are giving yourself the opportunity to make mistakes as you take these new chances. And we're not going to beat ourselves up for making these mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes and that's okay. We are all human and to err is human. So keep that in mind. Let yourself suck at things. Let's all suck at things together in 2020. We're going to take chances and make mistakes and be the adults that Miss Frizzle tried to raise us to be. All right, guys, that is all I have for today on the little things and making better choices, not perfect choices. Thank you so much for listening to the GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'd like to ask y'all to please remember to subscribe to the show and writing a nice review always helps us. Also, if you can please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, I'd appreciate it and I'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you. Have a good night. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Health and Wellness Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.